President Biden is continuing his first international trip in office, arriving today in Geneva, Switzerland, ahead of his highly anticipated face-to-face -face summit tomorrow with Russian President Vladimir Putin. On the agenda for their meeting, a range of policy items, including nuclear stability, climate change, cyber terrorism, as well as various regional conflicts, such as the civil war in Syria. Joining us now to break down what's at stake for this critically important summit is Anatole Levin. He's a senior research fellow at the Quincy Institute for Responsible Statecraft. Anatole, is there really any way for a president to prepare for a meeting with Vladimir Putin? Is he unpredictable or is there a method to the madness? I think Putin is entirely predictable. You know, his, his policies have been very consistent for a number of years. Uh, there haven't been policies that the United States has liked, but, you know, that's a different matter. Um, the, the, the point of this meeting is to learn about red lines on both sides, you know, that, that neither side can violate without really serious trouble. So I think that will probably be the most useful. Uh, aspect uh, of the meeting, although, frankly, the two sides should know that already. And having done that, you know, we can hope that they may make some progress on areas where actually uh, either progress can be made or, as on Afghanistan, the USA and, and uh, Russia actually agree already. And when you say red lines, what are some of the consequences for either country crossing them? Well, if Russia were to try to interfere again in the U.S. political process, I think you would see uh, America respond with much tougher sanctions. I mean, sanctions that would really try to, to shut down a large part of, uh, of Russian trade. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I think that if uh, Ukraine were to try to, to drive Russia out of eastern Ukraine by force, uh, Russia would go to war. Um, and uh, will intervene in Belarus if the West tries to take Belarus into NATO and the European Union. So we're looking at a combination of high state sanctions and potential kinetic warfare. What of the recent spate of cyber attacks? Is there any hope for accountability and of, to Putin in particular for what happened not only with solar winds and the U.S. government, but also most recently on Colonial Pipeline? Well, the colonial pipeline was a criminal uh, act, but of course there are real suspicions that the Russian state is protecting, or at least not going after, these criminals. So, um, but SolarWinds was was not an attack. Um, you know, it, it, there was no sabotage involved. Uh, um, so let us hope uh, that um, Biden will be able to, you know, convince Putin that sabotage has to stop. There, there's no chance of of states stopping espionage. Uh, after all, America does it all the time. Um, so, you know, the, we need to differentiate between different kinds of, of cyber activity. I mean, maybe this summit will bring us a bit closer to, to clarity on that. Uh, but that, that would be an interesting conversation to be a fly on the wall, right? Say, well, you know, we expect that you're going to be spying on us. Just don't damage anything while you're in there. Uh, but that's part of having a conversation with an adversary, right, is the expectation you're not going to agree on everything. Is it a win? If wh What does a win look like when you know you're still going to walk away its adversaries? Well, a win, uh, as during the Cold War, remember, you know, the U.S. presidents met with Soviet leaders at the height of the Cold War, and the Soviet Union was a much, you know, much bigger enemy of the United States than Russia is today. I mean, you walk away from it if you manage to reduce tension a bit, uh, if you lay the groundwork for progress where progress can be made on nuclear arms reductions, for example, which is in the interest of both states, uh, and uh, if you can identify areas where actually you agree. You know, I mentioned Afghanistan on, you know, on managing Afghanistan after the U.S. military withdrawal, U.S. and Russia are on the same page, basically. And how could both leaders find common ground on, say, climate change policy? Well, I mean, they can make a joint statement, uh, but obviously Russia has done very little so far. I mean, not that America has been perfect either, of course, under Republican administrations. Um, but, you know, even a strong declaration will move things forward a bit, you know, and pin the Russians down a bit to future action. But, you know, we mustn't expect miracles.
Well, we're not even expecting a joint press conference, so I think miracles will have to wait. Uh, we are looking forward to see at least what words are used by both sides to describe what may or may not have been accomplished by tomorrow's meeting. Uh, Anatole Levin, Senior Research Fellow at Quincy Institute, thank you for joining us. Coming up next, we'll dive into the new plan of action from the White House on how to stem the number of incidents tied to domestic terrorism.